Same video. Thursday afternoon. Someone's happy. As far as people are concerned, we were living at a palace, and we were in a cottage we were on, a living on palace grounds. grounds. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle may have been senior working royals when they got married, but apparently they weren't exactly living in a palace. In the fourth episode of Netflix's docuseries, Harry and Meghan, the couple reflected on what living in Nottingham Cottage was like which was their first home together. Kensington Palace sounds very regal. Of course it does. It says palace in the name. But Nottingham Cottage, it was so small. The whole thing's on a slight, on a slight lean, <laughs> really low ceiling. So I don't know who was there before. They must have been very short. He would just hit his head constantly in that, <laughs> that place because he's so tall. Me with a hoe and H varnishing. It was just a chapter in our lives where I don't think anyone could believe what it was actually like behind the scenes. While Harry and Meghan were residing in their tiny yet cozy humble abode, they had a very special guest come visit them, and she couldn't believe the simplicity they were living. Well, Oprah came over for tea, didn't she? She did. And when she came in, she sat down, she goes, no one would ever believe it. No one would ever believe it. <laughs> After spending the first part of their marriage at Nottingham Cottage, the couple were ecstatic when Queen Elizabeth offered for them to live in Frogmore Cottage in order to bring their first child into the world. They knew that they didn't want to bring Archie up in this frenzy that they lived in. So then to suddenly have my grandmother go, there's a house, Frogmore Cottage, it's available, are you interested? Yes, please. Yes. It was a place where we had so many memories. From our courtship, our engagement, our wedding, our walks. And then where we ended up, you know, having our baby. Meghan and Harry may have been in a larger home, but that didn't exactly make bringing a baby into the royal family easier. In the same episode, the couple shared what the tabloid said and the scrutiny they faced when it came to keeping their first child, Archie, private. Archie's just been born. Media, social media starts to sort of take on a life of its own. Someone in the media posting a photograph of a couple with a chimp. And at the top it said, royal baby leaves hospital. So that was one of the first things that I saw. It was a metaphor for the way this family were being treated, that their dignity and their right to be treated equally and have their humanity respected and acknowledged was secondary to a white patriarchal media establishment. Were you aware of the pressure on them to go pose for the media at that time? Mm -hmm. At the time of Archie's birth, Megan's mom, Doria, stayed with them and helped take care of her grandson while well, Meghan and Harry dealt with the media glare. I was with her. I mean, I was there. I'd been there a month. Yeah. Yeah, and that, um, well, they had already, you know, just stripped both of them of any kind of privacy. It was almost like, it's not your child, it's, it's the institution's child. She's saying, no, this is my baby. I was there when she brought him home from the hospital. No tiny little thing. Mm -hmm. I'd never been a grandma. I mean, I you know I'm all, I'm new to being a grandma. My mom stayed with us for a month solid, and it was great to have her there. But then after that, you thought we were in a position where we didn't have someone to help us with Archie. After Doria left to go back to the states, Megan and Harry explained that they needed help again, and that was when they hired their nanny, Lauren Kumalo who was very excited to get the job. I had this phone call and they were like, Prince Harry and Meghan would like to see you and speak to you about looking after Archie. I was like, hang on a minute, I need to sit down. I remember just driving so far. I think I did get a ticket actually, yes I did. <laughs> when I arrived at Frogmore Cottage, I see this guy, he's tall, he's ginger, and he's walking barefoot. And I have gone and bought a new pair of shoes in Clark's. 
And suddenly, whatever I thought or felt, the formality just sort of slid. And I felt so at ease. In the morning when he woke up, first thing mom and dad would come in, they would be with their baby, she would feed him. And then after that, I'll take over and normally would go for a morning walk. She said, is it okay if I like tie him on my back with a mud cloth like we do in Zimbabwe? Yes, let's do that. You're oh, walking. just legs like this, like <laughs> hugging Laura, like this, fast asleep. It's it was true. brilliant. She just took care of not just Archie, but she took care of oh, us. She true. definitely took care of me. Besides having to face the media at the time while also having a baby, there were some very happy private moments as the couple shared more never before seen beautiful photographs in this episode, which include Archie as a little baby being bathed by his loving parents. And in another emotional shot, Megan cradles him as a tiny newborn, sitting in front of a window, pressing her forehead against her son's. The couple kept their privacy for four months until they went on their first royal tour with Archie tagging along. And Harry explained what that experience was like. Early into the job, we have to prepare for a tour. I'm like, what do I pack for a small prince? Please place items in the locket carefully. That they it's always been a bit of a royal thing to go on a tour with your child. The South Africa tour, Archie being four months old, and off we went and we took him with us. And it was the first time that we sort of traveled as a family for official work. It was a real strange experience. Oh. 